Hello and welcome to Smile and Spread a Little Joy. I am your host, Deborah, known as the Smile Lady. And if you are tuning in for the first time, the Smile is an acronym and everybody was born to smile. The S is for support. The M is for motivate. The I is for invest. The L is for love. And the E is for educate. And we were all born to smile and spread a little bit of joy. Because if you're not working your purpose, what is your purpose? And today, oh my goodness, I have a guest on a glass blower. I've never met a glass blower in person. And his name is Chris Mosley of Mozart Design. And his pieces are fabulous. Later, you'll see some of his art. But right now, I can't wait to introduce you to Chris Mosley of Mozart Design. And he will tell you how to reach him because once you see his pieces, you're going to want to get in touch with him. Maybe your children may want to learn how to blow and um, be a glass blower. This seems to be a lost art or maybe the best kept secret because when I saw what he did, I was just blown, blown away. Pardon the pun. But anyway, without any further ado, I want to introduce you to the founder of Mozart Design. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for having uh, me. Uh, this is just a first for me. First for so me that's too. one thing I can scratch <laughs> off on my bucket list. And basically what I ask people for their smile is what is it you love doing so much you would do it even if you did not get paid? Well, that's pretty simple. Um, it's my glass blowing right here. Oh, okay. And how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been doing glass since 2011. Okay. But I've been doing art my whole life. So it was just kind of a process of moving more into off the paper to sculptures and glass. Now, um, when you were about five or six years old, I love to take people back because I truly believe that a, per a, a child or a person has been working in their purpose since they were about six. Okay. What were you doing at about five or six, if you can remember? Um, that's Yeah, I can remember easy. Um, so one was playing with Legos. See? I always, I was always, my mom would always cook dinner and I would be, the stairs were like right behind her. Um, and I'd always be on the, the top of the stairs uh, playing with my Legos. See, um, creating yep. and designing. As, and as an only child, I, always, I had to find something to do. So I was always using my imagination and always um, creating. And I was always the kid in school that would be like, you know, probably five pages behind everyone in reading class because I was just constantly doodling, making ah, my own stories. That sounds like my son. <laughs> He's an artist. And I believe they came out of the world. I, I call artists and God's photographers yep. because it just comes out like it does in a camera yep. on the paper. Mm -hmm. And I have two, my two youngest, it's just like that. I had to do their bedroom where they could draw on the walls. Oh, that's awesome. And um, that, that um, what you call it, that semi-gloss, yep. where it dry, like yep. you can erase it. Yep, the dry eraser. Yes, and their handprints were on the shades and they knew that that room was free to do whatever they want, like graffiti on their wall. That's a good outlet. That's definitely wow. a good outlet. But yeah, that's how so it started. So this is, may I see one of those? Yes. So These, I mean, this, spider. oh, goodness. I could do that. Ooh. <laughs> like a black widow. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh. It'd be good as a ring. Oh. I, I yes, I do love it. You yep. should see, this is a small one compared to what I like. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, oh my goodness, I could really work some of these. Yep, and then. And this is a, a bird. Beautiful a, a, hummingbird. Oh, hummingbird. Yep. Now, this here is maybe to hang it? Yeah, you, so you can hang those in your kitchen, um, and when the sun catches it, <gasps> it'll reflect the colors. Oh my gosh. So, those are good sun catchers. Oh my goodness. Brighten Very. up your day. Now, we're going to go into a little Thank bit you. before we get into the support. What does it take? I mean, how did you transport this art, this fabulous art you're drawing into glass blowing? As a matter of fact, I don't see too many African American glass no, blowers. There actually isn't. Um, it's been an interesting road because a lot of that is was done in um, white academia. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, I went to a fairly good school. Um, what school was that? Um, upstate New York. Okay. Um, that was my high school mm -hmm. um, called Brockport. And, you know, there was probably maybe 30 kid African Americans in my graduating class out of like 400. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just always. So less than 10%. Yeah. I was just always in, you know, but they always had good resources. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of good, um, a lot of schools like that in the suburbs always had good resources. Oh, tell you me. Know, um, you know, their teachers are really engaged. Um, and my parents were really engaged. So they kind of always knew that I was um, into art and I needed to do something. So mm -hmm. I ended up going to design, graphic design school in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. where that kind of went from painting to digital. Wow. And then... Because you can make these move then in digital, huh? Yeah, well, yep. So it kind of like, that was kind of like moving, okay, this is more serious. Now it's not just mm -hmm. doodling anymore. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing it for college. Um, and then kind of got sick of the, the clicking the mouse, the two-dimensional um, screen and stuff like that. And then um, for, you know, for a good amount of years from 2000 and five to 2010, I was just bouncing around searching for different mediums and art, you know, whether it was sculpture with um, big styrofoam or um, repaging books and stuff like wow. that. So just many different studios. It was a great time. It was during the, the art renaissances, like I like to call it, mm -hmm. during Atlanta, when Atlanta was getting its name known in the, the, and um, the Harlem, the, yeah, did you yeah. do Harlem? Um, no, nope. no, no. So it was just like, you know, during the hip hop era, the hip hop era in um, Atlanta and during the Tyler Perry and like when the movies were starting to come out. So there was a lot of work to do in Atlanta. And I was just bouncing around the studios and through just bouncing around to many different studios, um, I came across the art community called The Goat Farm in um, West Midtown in Atlanta. And I came across the Goat Town, like G-O-A. Goat Farm. Goat, goat Farm. Okay, Goat yeah. Farm. Yep, it's um, where they taped Hunger Games 2 and 3. Whoa. And some episodes of well, The Walking Dead. So there was just like real artists, you know. I was like, these people are amazing, you know. And I was just like inspired. I put myself around people that were doing better than me in life. Uh, did you hear that? Birds of a feather? You got to hang around. You got to watch. And mm. everything is not going to pay you monetarily but experientially you will get paid you will get a reward you know because he got you got educated sometimes just by watching people mm -hmm. right yep absolutely you, we need to tell our children that that you know everything is not money but that education mm -hmm. is money mm -hmm. in the bank you could say you had that experience yep. learning the process now, i want you to thank your mother and father what is their <laughs> name linda and, and robert mosley Thank you, Linda and Thank Robert Mosley. It takes a village mm, like he did. <laughs> I'm kissing you. Thank you. I would not have met him if it wasn't for you. But, you know, um, are they artists? Um, no, believe it or not, they're not. Um, Your not, mother? No. Does work. My mom is, she's retired. Both of my parents are retired. Um, you know, they, they're old school. They raised me old school. Mm -hmm. um, my dad retired Eastman Kodak, 37 years. Mm -hmm. My mom, customer service. Um, but she was more of the entrepreneur one mm -hmm. and always likes to try different things. Ooh. So that's kind of where I got it from. I connect more with my mom than I think anyone in my family. Because okay. she's always, she's very free-spirited. We're both Pisces. Oh, um, March 6th? Don't tell yeah, me. Yeah, she's March 15th on February. Okay, yep. okay, because I have a March 6th baby. Okay. She was born on Ghana's Independence Day, okay. but not in 1957, okay. but March 6th. And Shaquille O'Neal, my baby, he's born on March 6th also, and he was born in 1972. Okay. And my daughter was born in 1973, March 6th. Okay. So um, when your support system, we touched on that a little bit. Your mother mm -hmm. and your father was always supportive. Yep. Right? So your major in school, what did you get your degree in? Um, We're so, ahead a bit. so let's go back to 2005 when I got my associates in graphic design. Right. And that was when I went to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and then for a while, I just had regular jobs, just paying bills, figuring out what I wanted to do because I wasn't passionate about graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until 2011 after I um, ended up at the goat farm did I meet. Um, a friend who put me on the path to find glass blowing. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. That uh, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to think of when you blow 
glass, you have a pipe or something like a um, welder. So there's a few different processes. So I know the video that I show is gonna yep. gonna gonna give give a little bit of yep. that. Yep. Yep. And some of the uh, pictures of some of your other pieces, the ones yep. that glow and light up. Yep. So you do you market these on a website? Do you have um, a website? Yep. So you can go to mozart.com, M-O-Z-E-A-R-T.com, and then that's got everything. So with that, you have a place where, let's say, young, what I'm interested in also is young men and young women who want to get into this and what it takes because that's what I'm really about, the youth, yep. and helping your child tap into their inner smile. Like, thank you, parents, like your parents <laughs> did to you. Yes. Um, how would they contact you? Because some um, of them can't get on So Facebook. through my website, you can, um, I have my cell phone on there. Um, I have email. I have all my social media. Um, I have a studio in Torrance. Okay. Um, that is where I'm um, blowing my glass. What about um, YouTube? Do you have anything of you blowing the glass? Um, on yes, I have some videos on YouTube. Okay. Um, nothing tutorial yet. Yes. I'm in the process of. Um, I I would say I'm still in the emerging artist stage of my life okay. right now. Okay. Um, so a lot of time is like commissions and you know trying to work towards like gallery stuff and things like that. Okay. But if someone's really interested, um, I actually am looking for to um, kind of teach and move into that um, into that type of um, category in glass. Um, so you can, I'm very reachable and approachable person and um, I can definitely take on some students. Okay, well, well you know, PasadenaMedia.tv, if you're looking at it there, you could go to YouTube and I'm gonna post this show on YouTube also. And you go to that and you go to the Arroyo Channel 32. But what you can do is go in and see this show and get the information, and my YouTube channel is, you know, uh, Deborah dash smile lady, all is one word, and the last name is Johnson. I know some of y'all didn't know that, but basically now that we're using the social media, but the first time every Saturday, you can watch, and who knows, by the, you know, this month, and on YouTube, you can watch Mozart. And with that, your support system was your parents. Mm -hmm. Any teacher that you want to say thank you to that um, helped you? Or there's glass actually floor? there's actually a few because, um, like I say, in this process, there's it's 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 hard. You know, um, it's not everywhere. It's pretty pricey to get into. Mm -hmm. um, I um, so my first mentor, Matt Janke, um, just kind of you know like giving a kid who didn't have much a chance. Mm -hmm. um, very historic factor about Matt's studio is Matt studio is actually right down the street from where Martin Luther King Whoa. Jr. was born in Atlanta, Georgia. So very historic place. It's the old fourth ward in Atlanta, Georgia, if anyone's ever interested. But thanks, Matt. Um, obviously, my parents. And then all my, all my teachers. I've taken classes all over the country. That's what brought me out to California. I actually got a job in my field. I have an applied science degree. Oh in scientific glass technology. Um, so you have to take like um, organic chem and different fabrications. So I was actually taught um, in a professional manner how to make all these things. Um, and a lot of that, those jobs go to like um, glass blowers that work in universities that do all the stuff for the chemistry department. And Whoa. I was act actually at the time, um, what actually brought me out to California was um, I was making um, IMAX movie bulbs. So you, when you go to the movie theater and you watch an IMAX movie, um, I used to make the light bulbs that would actually go into the projector that would allow you to watch the movies. Wow. And um, that's how I, that's what brought me out to California. So through following my passion and staying persistent and just never giving up, I was able to actually get um, uh, independent study my last semester of school. Mm. And I was able to get, finish up my last 10 credits and work a full-time job because I moved out to California and got a job working for Phillips Lighting. Phillips Lighting. Now, see, that is that is wonderful. Can we do, like, take one? You know, that 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 right there is just <laughs> absolutely amazing. Now, now, children, did you hear what Chris said? It was hard work. It was education. It was somebody that supported him. That first letter in SMILE is it's amazing that you need, it takes a village. 
And that village was his teachers, village was his parents, village was his employers. You have to take every opportunity to really perfect your art. And what is it you've been doing since you're about five or six years old? And you would do it even if you didn't get paid. You hear him say Legos. You hear him say drawing. And then he went and he decided out of that what form of art. Thank you so much. Take two. Take yes. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm getting so good at this. Okay. Now we can move on to your motivation. I know what motivated you as far as you know, you loved art yep. ever since you were little, mm -hmm. your Legos and putting things together, yep. but your other motivation, which will lead back to you giving back to the community, because you know, our gift is just not for us. Yep, exactly. That that inner motivation that drove you, how do you give back now to the, this is the I and invest? So that motivation actually came from, um, it's kind of deep, um, but I think it's, it's, it's very important, especially today. Um, you see in our community, um, we're always looking for someone to do something for us or hand out or why isn't this happening? Why isn't exactly. that? Oh, tell um, it, tell it. And I was like, well, and I noticed in, you know, because I've lived in, I've, I've lived all over, but like, why don't we do it for ourselves? You know, like, why don't we go I in there and build up our buildings <laughs> and remodel and, you know, start companies, architecture companies and stuff like that. So I, I got sick of asking, where are these people? And I was like, you know what? I need to like start building with my hands and get good at something, a craft or an art form so I can be able to trip, can contribute to my community. And so that was really my motivation is I just got sick of waiting for someone and I was like, I need to do something for myself and build with my hands. So how do and you give back? You know, like we have to invest and leave this place better than we yep. found it. How do you give back so, charity-wise? So, so the long-term plan is um, uh, outreach program. Yeah. Um, and just a school in general. I haven't, I know schools are, a lot of especially inner city schools are getting rid of our programs. I would love to team up yes. with anyone out there yes. who wants to start alternative art schools that get kids in yes. doing craft yes. and making things and entrepreneurship using their and using and their hands. And I, it's okay with the digital yep, stuff, but yep, you have but to incorporate th that's the That's what other. made, I feel, that's what made our culture great, you know, is why do you think they brought us over here? Because uh, we were good at building oh, things. Tell we it. were hard workers, Ooh, we hallelujah. were strong. We knew how to do things, and they saw that, and I think a lot of that's been lost through history. Yes, um, and, and we allowed them to take that yep. away. And and to me, seeing this, I mean, this is just amazing. Glass blowing originated I? in Africa, ancient Mesopotamia. Oh, where say the it again. Where did it originate? In Africa. Hello, in Africa. That's Let's what I'm talking take. about. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, my goodness. This is amazing. I mean, these pieces, oh. And what is this? This looks like some type so of it's goldfish. So it's a little goldfish. A little goldfish? Yep, just a little goldfish oh that you buy at the pet store. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, a little ornament these for your so, desk. Let me put it by my smile. Yep. Um, you know, um, oh gosh, Hyacinth. And I hear my phone, I think, forgive me. But anyway, the smile that was given to me by Hyacinth, she'll be a future guest on the show also. All this makes me smile. And here I go. And the power <laughs> of words. See, smile? Yep. And smile releases those endorphins. Yes, when you it look does. in the mirror, yes, you have does. to look in the mirror and smile and give yourself that first vitamin every morning. And now we did talk about education yep. briefly, and we're going to roll in your video. So, you know what? We will be right back after this. You could get a little taste of what you'll find on his website of him creating his art. Mozart Designs. Correct. Yes, by Chris Mosley. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Thank you, Mom and Dad, for creating such a great piece of art here. <laughs> All right.
I was able to take a class at Corning Museum of Glass under an Italian artist named Emilio Santini, flame working class. And that really kind of opened up the doors to really sink my teeth into this medium. My name is Chris Mosley. I'm originally from upstate New York, Rochester to be exact. I have been living in Atlanta, Georgia for about 11 years, and I am currently resided in South Jersey, um, Salem, Carnage Point area, where I attend Salem Community College, and I am a scientific glass artist. Okay, well, welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Now, Chris, we're going to get into a deep subject. Love. Okay. love. We're at the love. SMI, okay. we're at the love. Okay. I know you love your family. Yep. I know you're an only child. Yep. And you were born in? 1984. Ooh. That's yep. right. When my 33. Yep. What month? Yep. February 27th. So. Oh, February 27th. Yep. Almost at that last yep. day of yep. February 27th. So... Frederick Douglass, uh, Knowledge is Power, was born in February. Okay. Um, they he didn't also... know what date. They just picked 14th, and they called him My Little Valentine. Really? Mm -hmm. I also, Rochester, New York, is where Frederick Douglass also resided. Shut up. Yep. See? So, uh, with the love, um, I know I asked you what it is you love doing. But as far as did you always kind of love yourself and have that positive outlook, and how important is love in this process? Um, it was huge. Um, I've always, I've always loved myself. I'm, if you talk to all my friends and family, I'm always thank you, mom I'm and dad. Always thank posting you. positive things. All my social thank media you, is always dad. positive. Um, just as a black male, I mean, like, what other options do I got? You Hello. Know what I'm Hello. Like, Hello. Well, are you are you married? Let me see. No, nope, not yet. Uh -oh. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm not trying to say nothing, but. Hello. But yeah, so you know, it's just like I was either complain and be one of those crabs, or figure out a way to get out of this bucket. Um, and positivity, love, is one of those, one of those tools that allow you uh, that allowed me to do that. Um, and really it was, you know, a lot of the times, especially like with something like this, because you fail, you know, like a lot of people are afraid of failure. So that's mm -hmm. why they don't start. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that love really kicked in for me mm -hmm. when I was, when I was getting my car repoed because all I did is want to blow glass Essex. and I didn't get a nine to five job. I was like, I need to focus on this. I want to do this when you know, everyone thought I was just throwing my life away and I was just, but I knew what, what I you wanted, wanted to do. What I wanted to do, that love really shined when when I didn't have much to eat and had to just struggle to get through it. <laughs> See, you know you love it <laughs> when you go going through that and still do it. I, I want, want you, you to, to talk, talk into your into camera your okay. and I want you to give your words of wisdom. Um, to anyone out yep. there, uh, if you have anything you love, any any career, any hobby, it doesn't matter if it's making sculptures out of glue or whatever it is, singing in the bathroom. Um, don't listen to all the naysayers, doesn't matter if it's your parents, your best friend, your wife, whoever. Go after what you love, you know? If that's, I mean, why else are you here? You get one shot at life and you don't wanna waste it. You don't wanna waste it working for someone else and working for their dreams. You wanna do what you love doing and the only way to do that is take action. You're gonna fail, it's gonna be miserable at times, um, but that's life and you just gotta keep moving forward and keep going. Um, yeah, just do it. 
And like mm. Nike says, just yes, do it. Just do it. Oh, you know what? He's going to have to come back. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. and Mrs. Mosley, for this creation, this art here. And if you're not working your purpose, what is your purpose? So roll in and you'll see some of his arts at the end of this. Thank you so much for smiling. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.